Hello everybody, welcome back to Unis Quick Tips. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to do Alice uh, as a three-dimensional cake standing person. So uh, my granddaughter has a birthday in a few days time. She asked me to do this especially. So uh, then I thought it is a very good example for a, a tutorial because it's not like a simple Barbie doll cake, which is the whole skirt is a cake. And then you, you make an indentation in the center and then you, you wrap the Barbie doll, actual Barbie doll in a kind of a cling wrap or something like this and pocket inside and continue piping something around. So that is not that simple. Uh, that's why I choose that uh, the idea to share with you as a tutorial. So uh, because the skirt has a starting from the certain height, and then we're gonna make the cake, of course, this part. And then there's also legs underneath that will be sort of like a, a cover the, uh, this internal structure. And then it's gonna be a good example to do it as a tutorial. That's why I choose to share with you the whole progress. So let me go through now what we need to do this. I have here the set of items for the internal structure and then the board. I will come back to this after I clear the table. So I have here 25 centimeter. A round mud cake sponge. There's no ganache sandwich yet. So I have here some ganache to do that. And then I have some chocolate to make the crust coat. Crust coat means once the shape is finished, I put a thin layer of chocolate on top on the surface to make it a little bit more firmer. So also uh, resist uh, to the pressure that I apply on it when I put some fondant on it. So. Uh, that also helped me to keep the cake in the shape. When I put some more weight on top, it doesn't really sink down. All right. So I have here reference picture, which I also uh, draw here the distances of the internal support, which I'm going to explain you soon. And this one, this is a, a face mold for a doll. So uh, how I did that, I just came across uh, some sort of like a, a baby doll. And then I take a piece of pastillage and then push it on the face and I get this one. So every time I use for something like that, uh, I push that uh, another passage inside here and I make the front side of the face and after that very easy to continue the, the, the back of the, the skull. So it uh, doesn't mean that I can't do it myself for this face, but I want to be practical for you. So if you also uh, find out a doll or, or something available around of you, maybe it belongs to your child or something, and then you take a uh, pastillage, push it on, and then uh, you can make a hard mold like this. You can keep it for years. So I'm not against that those silicone molds, but this is just free. It, it loses the color a little bit, but it doesn't matter. I just have to keep it like this. It dries, uh, no mold, anything, just nice, all right? So I have here a brush and water to make some glowing business. Uh, lots of uh, bits and pieces over here for modeling tools. So uh, most of it, I'm not gonna use it. Maybe I just use one or two of them, but I want to have it always available on the table. PVC pipe for rolling, uh, some scrapers, and then uh, for fondant uh, uh, pusher. And then for measurement, I have always using that transparent uh, ruler because it sees underneath that if I have to make something, uh, it will be very practical. So scissor, some starch for rolling the fondant. I have here yellow and blue fondant and white pastillage. So I'm going to color those, this pastillage with my skin color, skin tone, which I mix myself. So uh, how do I do that? I have uh, lots of uh, powder colors. And then uh, I take a, a foundation, just like it belongs to my wife, uh, as, a, as a sort of base color. I put on the paper and then trial different mixtures. And then as soon as I get close to that uh, uh, foundation color, I have my skin tone ready. I always mix it with the, uh, with the fondant or pastillage. I have also some luster over here for flash. Maybe I will do some highlighting on the face if I need it. All right. Uh, plastic knife belongs to here. Uh, towel. I will make it wet. Water spray always on table and oil spray always on table. I need it or not. So these are the things that uh, I needed or also you needed to make the same cake. So I'm going to clear up now and I'm going to talk about a little bit more about the, the internal support in the board. I have here nine millimeter thick, 35 centimeter round MDF board with a hole in the middle. There's a hole in the middle or the pre pre drilled hole. So either this one uh, I caught with the uh, uh, with the uh, velvet cloth and then glue this around with the spray glue 
and I have some legs over here because if I don't put those legs, that nut underneath, it will touch on the, on the, on the table, it will scratch the, the table, also it will be very wobbly. So that's why we need to have legs and also legs give me like finger space I can lift up the cake very easily. So when I draw this picture over here, and I make decisions that where is the location or where is the height of the, this uh, second holder. So logically, that picture is look a little bit more isometric view. So it comes from the top down. So uh, that skirt actually is straight. So I take the center line here as a, assume that this is, this is the uh, beginning part. And then after that, of course, the leg also be looking from top. That is shorter than as usual. So I'm going to make a little bit longer than that. So uh, that is eight millimeter long threaded rod. And then uh, there's a nut here, nut there with the washers to make it nice and stable. And after that, on the right height, I have another nut here, another nut here, and holding this holder. And that is three millimeter MDF, coated both sides with the cut board so the cake doesn't touch the wood, all right? But cake will still start touching to the, the metal. So we solve this problem by using this kind of uh, straws. So that straw is just the size of it, doesn't go in. So what I do, I just cut from the side here, like that. Push it in. Nicely. I, I will leave this one. I will cut maybe later on again. So there's a gap over here to cut this one also. Take the second one. And then put it on the other side, opposite direction. That's it. So that is completely protected. Cake will never touch that. So that part, I'm going to show you soon. So on the other side, uh, that one has to be about this size. Somewhere there. Also I cut two. I like to also avoid uh, cake touching to this metal. So I just used the chocolate. This chocolate gets set and then it stays stays back when you remove the cake from there. All right. A little bit here. This part is not important because I'm gonna put extra lift to make it level with the, the shoe of the Alice. So uh, that means I'm gonna use extra extra uh, fondant over here to make it base, all right? That's it. So, this sheet, plastic sheet, will stay till the cake is completely finished. After that, I'm gonna remove exactly from the, the base uh, fondant here. So, let's start now to cut the cake, the mud cake, and then shaping the, the skirt. Okay, this is the same size of this, uh, of this stand. So, if I place over here, and I like to go a little bit larger because they will be have some sort of like uh, the curvings around. So that's why I'm cutting slightly larger and also put my knife slightly bending like that. Okay, just like this. And if it's not exact what I'm doing, I can always fix it. No problem at all. All right. That's it. So, let's take this out. And then put the rest of the sponge somewhere else. Okay, I like to cut this into three slices. I want to have a nice moisture, uh, ganache in between. Right. So, this one first. Nice.
So first layer is finished. I'm going to do the second one now. I'm going to use that one as a, as a kind of like benefit uh, because it's already slanting. I'm just going to cut this one out a little bit. All right. Also cut from here a little bit. All right. And then put this one here. My hands are a little bit more involved now. That's why I'm wearing the gloves. All right, that's already looking good. And then we do the same thing, opposite. This way. I'm guessing this is correct. I'll cut this also in three layers. Okay. Can use a spoon now. This are a two piece, so I can push this one like that. So it was a joint, so I'm going to change this way. Okay, now I like to measure. This skirt has to be around, let's say around about 11 centimeters. 11 centimeters, that's, that's, about, that's about 11. So we have already done that. Uh, what I like to do, I'm just going to go a little bit of trimming here like this. That's pretty good. And uh, I like to do a little bit more ganache on top. When you work with ganache and mud cake, it's always messy. I always try to be neat and clean, but it's it's not possible. I don't know. As long as you clean as you go, that's fine. So as soon as that I finish this step, I'm going to clean nicely. All right. All right, that's already good. We don't need much cake for this cake. So I'll let you know how much how much sponge you need at the end. Let me wash my hands and come back to you. Table is clean, hands are clean, and all the tools are clean. Also, the, all the offcuts of the sponge uh, mixes, I put it carefully, just puzzle them together into that uh, about uh, 15 centimeter size of cake. This one goes back to the freezer. I will always need it sometimes if I have to make like three dimensional cake or some extensions or whatsoever, all right? So, uh, that is that. And I like to put a little bit more ganache. I use, most of the time, cling wrap for this kind of case to just the first shaping. All right. Just cut this one off. Push this in. First of all, I can use my hands now to shape the cake nicely. All right. Let's see. So that that is probably uh, something to look at it. It is not really straight. It's just straight like this and round the shape. So that's what I'm going to create here with this. All right. And also, uh, what's important? What is important here is uh, there's a kind of like a, a, a kind of crisis here on the side and on the left side and the right side. So front is quite straight. I believe that there's also straight in behind. So I'm gonna make two two sides, uh, which I choose that this way is nice. 
by using any kind of like pipe or something to give some creases here that will help me to when I'm doing the fondant in the right way Maybe just one big and two small so that's the big one and I want small on the side one more smaller in here all right so that is the that's the front will be another one here yeah and then here more small maybe one more small here this clean wrap is so comfortable to do this kind of job it's nice and clean all right i think we are done as I said, let's we'll go in the fridge now. They will wait for a while. I'll take a, I'll take a break, and after that, I come back. I start uh, shaping again, a little bit more, touching up, and then we do the chocolate uh, crust coat on it. So I will show you this one too later. One hour passed. I took it out from the fridge. Now I'm going to use a soft scraper. And then just go one more time around of it. Just make sure all the sort of like the imperfections will be nice and smooth. So that's what I'm looking for now. No rivers, no mountains. Nice and straight. Only the shape what I'm looking for. Okay. Okay. Back to the fridge. But this time, no cling wrap. Just I want to have it cool down. So I can continue with the chocolate grass coat. Now, at this stage, uh, there is a different methods we can use for different shapes. For example, if we have like a cubic shape, like very geometrical, we can use panels. Like we can we can scrape the chocolate in plastic sheets and stick it on it. And when it's when it's hardened, remove the plastic, cut the edges, and do it again for the other side. We can do those all those things. Or sometimes we can use brush. But uh, the, when we use the brush, brush get very quickly sort of like a, uh, get hardened on the, on the tips and there will be exact problems. Sometimes we can also use airless uh, paint gun. So we can, uh, we can add some uh, oil inside the chocolate and then uh, brush, just sort of spray it on the, on the object. But uh, also we can use this little plastic uh, scrapers, which is very, very flexible. And then just go uh, location by location, very small areas. And then I'm wearing now a plastic clothes because I will use also my fingers as a scraper. So when I get this one, so I just put a little bit of chocolate over here. And then I'm not targeting too big area. Make sure that I finish nice and clean. So when it's something like this, I touch it and then make sure that there's no, there's no sort of like a uh, blisters in there. Like, a, you know, little, little uh, sort of like gaps and, and stuff. Yeah. Okay, that's done. And then continue. Always small amount for small areas. Okay. So my chocolate crust is now finished. Normally what I do after this stage, I put another thin layers of ganache uh, just to stick the fondant. But I don't want the fondant sticks on this surface now because I will give uh, my sort of like uh, the creases of the of the cloth by manipulating part by part. So I don't want to, I don't want to find a stick on the surface so I can be free to do all those uh, manipulations. So uh, that's why I'm just gonna spray a little bit of water before I do the fondant work. So it's everything done. All the sticky bits from the table off, like uh, the ganache, the chocolate, and then the mud cake, everything off the table. We are going to start with the fondant work now. I'm going to start uh, from the skirt. So basically this is one round uh, circle, round piece. And then from here to here, I have to measure. So uh, if I take it, uh, the tailor's measurement, put from here to here, exactly 
uh, centimeter wise exactly about 30 centimeter and 12 inch. All right, I'm going to do that. So I'm not going to cut like uh, any piece out. I'm just going to try to make it one a circle and the falling down and then the, the extension is too many. Of course, when you push it down, it will be just like shrink a little bit. So then I will use those extra bit uh, for uh, creases that I'm going to create additionally. All right. So uh, what we said, 30 centimeter or 12 inch. Okay. And then water spray is standby. This is a little bit lighter color than the, uh, what's supposed to be, but don't worry about that. I'm not really hurrying up because I want to have the front done. A little bit of settles become for a bit more uh, firmer. It's about here. So from here till there, and we put it over here, from here till there. Okay, let's go. As good as possible, cut a circle. Not too bad. Just leave this one a bit eggy here. All right. Now, I'm going to cut slightly smaller because I believe that when I'm doing it, it will stretch down a little bit. So if it's if it's too long, I have to cut with scissor. There will be a little bit problem. If I make it a little bit shorter, it will be just right, I believe. Yeah? Okay. Water. Only on the top a little bit. I don't want to put anything here. All right. All right. Let's see. That's the front. Where's the front? Here's the front. All right. Okay, now I'll take my time. See, that's happening what I want it to happen. Slightly stretch it. Okay, the front is pretty much like straight. Okay, so far so good. My skirt is done. A bit of chocolate stain here, but I will use a little bit of wet towel and clean this up. All right. So I'm going to do the torso part now. So uh, when I look at here, uh, this one is about, let's say about 15% larger than this. All right? So why is that? Because I want to give enough cake to the, to the people. So um, that's why I make the, also this one proportion wise a little bit larger than the picture. All right? Just make a, a round ball. All right? Basically, that you can you can shape this on the body, all right? Just round ball like this, slightly eggish, like that. A little bit of oil, all right? And then just cut uh, kind of like out, so we don't have to force too much to push in. All right. Now take your time. A little bit, make 
make sure that the, the back is, the neck is on the right place. Now, the shoulders are important because we're going to put that, that fluffy shoulders there. Right. So, let's do the collar now. Okay, now there's two fluffy, sort of like a shoulder part. I'm going to cut first the two equal piece. That's one and two. This is ready for the next one. So that should be something like this. Something like this. Slightly moisturized here. Also other side, and then here behind. Okay, and then put it here. That's it. So like a something like a bit more like sharper on the edge here. And uh, and then some sort of like creases also here, like that. And here one more. So all that we have to do later on to make the the arm connect here. Okay. So this is already the right proportion. Basically where we left that uh, uh, the the straw, it will help me to hold the head. Uh, otherwise well, it would not enough the, the metal part. So that was a good thing. I mean, if it's happened to you, like you don't have enough extension to hold the head, you just poke another uh, skewer in there. That will be enough to, to hold the head. Now, we have one handicap here. If I have the floor, just leave it as it is, uh, with the nut in the middle. So nut actually is, uh, has to stay inside the shoe. The shoe is smaller than the nuts. So that's why I like to bring the floor into the upper level of the nut. So if I put the nut over here, as you see that I roll uh, the piece of uh, uh, sort of burgundy color uh, fondant, which, does, which will match very nicely to the floor, and I will bring that the floor level higher, so the shoe will be stay nicely with the right size on top. So what I did, I rolled the, the fondant, and I put some marking on it like this with the knife, and then we just like certain areas, just irregularly, I cut off and I just remove it. So uh, what I like to do, I'm going to cut one circle here, which where we uh, the nuts coming there, all right, and then after, just cut this one also like that. Put a little bit of water here. Okay, that's the front. I want to have it like sort of diagonal shape.
that's it. So that's already like look like a, a floor uh, floor tiles, and then the shoe will come exactly on the spot. There will be no problem at all. I choose the burgundy color because I don't want to in any color, any other colors are striking uh, sort of additionally from the whole view. Uh, I just want to have it like a quite matching to the, the board color here. That's why I choose burgundy. All right, you are ready with that. So next I like to do what I need later on, uh, quite firm. So when I shape the, the head, uh, I like to push the eyeballs, white eyeballs, push it into the soft uh, pastillage to have the, uh, the ice right. So that's why I like to produce the white uh, part of the ice first and I will do something else. Once I'm making the face, the eyeballs will be ready to, to push in in a hard condition. When I look at this picture, the eyes not like an almond shape. It, it is a more flat underneath uh, at the lower part and then more roundish on the top. So it will be so it looked like look like this. All right, look like this. So when I put uh, uh, left and right together, actually it's a, it's a kind of like a oblong shape that we have to cut in the middle, right? So I will do just a, a two or three of them separately and I will choose the right size later on. Right? I want to make it harder when it dries, so I just put a little bit more starch in it. All right. Slightly bending like this. No, I just make it straight. I can still bend. Like that. Like that. This one was a bit too much. Yeah, like that. All right. So all I have to do. The lower part, I make it a little bit more roundish. Okay, that should be alright. Next thing I like to do the apron. There's two ways to go. Either you roll the uh, pastillage, put it on, and then you use the scissor or, or just like a knife or blade to cut it out, or you just make a kind of like a template with paper by just measuring and then make a rough drawing here. That's what I'm going to do. So when I look at this picture and also here, the apron here from here to there is about 10 centimeters. All right. So 10 centimeters means here and there. All right. So then uh, at the bottom and this side will be around sort of like a let's say about uh, 13 centimeters. So 13 is here. And then upper part, uh, actually something like this, but I want to make it a little bit more larger like this. And I'll fold a couple of creases here to create this. So that will be my apron for the lower part. For the top, uh, there is no creases on the top here. So that will be around so sort of like three centimeters, three centimeters, and then it will be here around four centimeters. So that will be sort of like neck. All right, and then that one goes to the other side. Doesn't matter. All right, and then that will be here about something like that. So if I do this one, uh, I think in the other side it will be it will be crisscross, or maybe just go this right away to the bottom like that, and then they will be have like a ribbon around here, 
nice big ribbon behind. So that's why uh, I want to do uh, uh, this one a bit longer, longer like this to go to go back, All right? So let's do it. I'm going to cut this with the uh, scissor and then uh, roll the pastillage and show you what to do. So with this way, we don't have to cut anything. Just, we don't have to use scissor or something, anything. You just place it on and that's it, finish. All right. So a little bit longer. That should be all right. We should cut maybe a couple of more stripes to make the the belt and everything. Probably that the last bit a little bit bigger, so a little bit more like this, something like that. Looks nicer like that. All right, let's do it. A little bit of water. So, folding, folding, folding. Just a couple of little things like this. Place it on. I didn't like it. I have to make it a little bit larger. Or larger. That's better. Here, like that, and like that, a bit of water. Pretty good. Okay, it's going to be cut. Okay, while we're working here, let's finish this up completely. All right. This 
here and a bit of water here again. This one here, open up a little bit. This one here. And then we need one more small little piece to put on top to make it like look like a look like sort of like a, a tie. That's it. That's it. I can see a little bit from here, that's is, which is a good thing. There's also, in this area, there is two pieces, uh, as you see over here, is a kind of like a covering on the shoulder part. So uh, if I put two together, it's a round piece. So I'm just going to cut one round piece like that. Cut in half. All right. Put a little bit of water here, just on this area. Yes, sort of. That's done. Now, I like to do the, the legs. Now, we have one uh, internal support, which is the 8 millimeter of uh, long tethered rod, which will be hidden inside one of the leg. And then another leg will be no internal support. So that's why I can't just cut two pieces uh, equally and try to make it because one of them will not going to be right. So that's why I'm going to do first the one that which is uh, around the, the post and I will do the other one later on. <clears throat> I'm just guessing the amount. So uh, when I look at here that this part of the leg is quite sort of like this is the pipe. When the pipe goes inside here so that will be almost very, very thin here. Uh, then it's like a, a, this much of meat around of it. So I just have to like estimate. And then the height is about sort of seven centimeter. All right. So let's do it something like this. And then roll it very thin. like this all right and then cut this one here and this also seven centimeter around there all right. so this one we have to go around of the this post and then join it to behind all right it has to be quite sort of like moisturized so it will be nice and easy gluing. So I'm just going to go here underneath. And I guess I think it's right. Yes.
and then next leg. Uh, let's make this one a little bit sort of like this is the let's say the back leg, but the other way around. So this one goes this way, and now we have the one more leg in the front. Don't have to follow exactly that. So every time you do something like that, you don't have to make exact size. You just have to make a bit bigger than that. So after that, you can cut. So that is already a little bit too much here. So I'm going to cut this like this. And the seven centimeter. Here. Okay, just check, pretty much same. So what I like to do, I'm going to put a bit of moisture here, uh, which is touching to the other leg. A bit of moisture here, a bit of moisture here. And then I'll just go underneath and then that's the front. That leg should be somewhere around here. That's it. Yes. We still have to make the shoe. Uh, that's why I make a small uh, sort of like a feet that uh, I leave some space in the front so I can fill up with the, the shoe material and then they'll be done uh, right proportion. At the moment it's like two short feet, but this is deliberately, okay? So I just put a, another piece like this, round. Now I know that this is going to be part of this goes like this, so I'm just going to be preparing for that. And a uh, little bit of moisture in the front, on the ground, and then this should be like this. So one foot like this, another one open up like that, so this will be just right. And put it down. That's pretty much the same size and then merge it down together, all together. That's good. So I will leave this part like that. I'm not going to continue the shoe because the shoe is the same color of the ribbon here, the bow here. So once I finish the head and everything, then I will do, when I'm doing this one, I will do this one too. Now is the time to uh, make the face. So I already mixed some uh, skin color into my pasta dish, and I'm going to push this one into the mold. Uh, this mold doesn't give me a complete face, so it's only a start. I will go further with that. So as you see that when I'm knitting, I have this joining part, I have also smooth part here. So I just roll this one like that. Make sure that this is nice and smooth, this doesn't matter, all right? And after that, so put a little bit of starch here on the surface, so it doesn't stick everywhere. All right, make sure the mold is clean. Push this in, and then put your thumb here, all the way in very, very strongly. So make sure, make sure that all the, uh, all the sort of details is, goes into the mold, right? So, that's it, take it out, all right, so I will just put a little bit of oil here, okay, now, first of all, there's a kind of like this part, it's not what we're looking for, I'm just going to get this one nice and smooth. I want the, the hair starts a bit more upper side. Not in that area. Okay. And then pull the nose up. 
slightly, not too much. Nostrils. Okay, now I have a piece of uh, wood over here. I make it nice and sharp here. I push this in and open up the lip so I can place some teeth inside. Okay, I like to pull the chin a bit more longer. It. In the meantime, I got this uh, neck also firm up a little bit. So, as you see, that I'm not worried about at the moment for the ice because I know that I have my passenger's pieces nice and dry, I can push it in. Okay, so it's not smiling at the moment. We do now here. Take a bit of white pastillage. That's not white. That's the one. It's more like this. Push it. Okay. Moisture here. Push this one in. So when we do that, we have to make sure that it goes all the way in. Like that. Like that. Like that. So a little bit more smiley. Now, so what I like to do, I'm going to put a bit of moisture over here, a bit of moisture over here, and then get this one. So uh, as I see that, it's slightly like that. Push it in. So because of the passages, I make it earlier nice and dry. It will also make a nice sort of like a indentation into the eye socket okay before you push make sure that you're in the right, right location That's good. Okay, so far so good. My face is ready. So what I like to do now is 
I don't worry I don't worry about the back of it so this is the same size of this the other side where the neck is on the body so I'm just going to chop this up a little bit like that and then this is the same size I just push it in slightly this much is more than enough and leave it and leave it so I'm gonna do all the details of the face actually not on the uh, body I'm gonna make it separately and when it's finished I put it I'm gonna put it on there okay let's continue so the faces already I add a little bit more uh, flesh behind so that's already good so I like to put uh, now the ears Let me do a little bit of makeup after that. Right. The hair we're covering all those uh, joining parts. I don't have to worry about it. Good. All right, let's start doing some makeup. Okay. Now I have one brush, good brush. I like to start from the lightest color, which is the very light pink. So not to not to worry about too much washing the brush. Next thing I like to do the eyebrow. Let's go and do this uh, blue part. So the eye is like here, looking to the right. Big blue eyes. I'm going to go through a bit of water after that to make it a bit more lighter. 
So let's check now. Is it echo? No. That's it. Now is the black part. Now, we're going to put another white point somewhere, but I'm going to wait till the black is nice and dry. Otherwise, that will be bleed. i just leave it first for a while. That white dot is always make it nice and shiny. So I'm going to put now a little bit of black line here inside there. OK, and also also uh, on the other side okay now as you see over here there's a nice eyelashes so I have a bit of black here So I have to mix it. I just add colors inside so it's like a bit more messy. I'm gonna knead it and wash my hands after that. Okay, watch this. A little bit of pastillage, black. Uh, actually I put some more starch to make it really really hard. Okay, so I pinch one side. Very sharp, like a knife. Okay, and after I take a scissor and then just cut like this. I use this part of the scissor. Okay. Let's see how it looks like. I think it's not bad. So what I like to do now, I'm going to use that that area already wet with the black uh, with the black uh, paint. All right, so I'm gonna stick this one over there now. I'm holding with the with the uh, what do you call acupuncture needle. Didn't work, so I need some more moisture. Just around here. All right, let's go. That's a bit tedious work, but I'm sure we can manage. So bend a little bit according to the shape of it. Come on, baby. Stay there. Okay. Now, when it's standing, you can always manage with something else. Push this one here. Push this one there. Push this one there. Okay. And then, bring it up. Thing is already good. One more. So always you have to knead freshly. Yeah, I think it's all right. Okay. Now what I like to do, I'm going to put it on the on the body. Okay. I like to put first the the shiny spots on the eyes. So just make one little white dot. And that's already a piece too big. And then cut in two. Maybe three. 
that's already big enough. And then one more small piece cut. Like this. All right. There's this. Right there. Okay. Push a little bit. Done. So, let's get this on the body. That helps a lot because that cavity inside, it doesn't force and it doesn't crack anything. That's it. Yeah. Now next thing to do is the uh, the arms because if we do the arms when we're doing later on the hair when maybe we just go around the arm or just maybe hugging the arm or something like this because I don't want to do the hair first and then the arms after so the arms first. Okay one of the arm I already did it so I'm gonna do the next one now. I also stand by with a piece of a spaghetti. That will help me to join the arm very easily. All right. So uh, because I already portioned two of them together, so I know exactly how much I need. A little bit oil always help. If you take a little bit time to model something. So I'm just doing this so that the shape is like a, like a thicker to thin and also a little bit more bit more flesh at the end for the hint. All right. Like that. So that means that the big thumb is on this side. So I push like this and like that. Let me give you more close up. So now, basically, that is at the beginning. So this part is a bit more like a coming out. And then you use a right scissor to cut. One finger at a time. So I'm cutting one, this one, and then also shaping at the same time. See that? Shaping at the same time. Then as soon as that is finished, I shape the rest of it. All right, and then after that, one finger at a time. So this is the first finger. Next one. Next one. Touch a little bit, so that I roll a little bit, and then make sure that you're pinching upwards for the uh, for the nail, fingernail. And this one always uh, not proportional because you're cutting one finger at a time, so you may end up something too much at the end. Just cut this one off, and then remove that too much apart. And then this one also again. So now give a bit more enhancement. So give me kind of like distance in between the fingers. All right, and then before pasta get too hard, shape it. So this will hold this hand. So I'm going to make it like a little bit more like this, and also a little bit more bending like that. All right. So that should be good. Don't forget pasta If you if you fiddle too long, you're not going to achieve start cracking all right so let's go like towards the upper side so that's the hand already done 
lower part is done. Squish a little bit. It will be like this. We bend like that. Elbow. That muscle here, correct. That should be a little bit more thicker. Okay. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to cut this like that. Right bit here. And poke a piece of a uh, small one, like that, here. After that, take this one, a little bit of moisture, develop the syrup, stickiness, Make sure that this connection first is done. Then bring this one here and then hold the other hand accordingly. A little bit of water here to hold the hand in position. That's it. We are ready for the uh, hair now. Now, when we look at here, uh, let's let's try to see what's going on here. So there's one. Uh, we can't make the whole hair in one piece and put it on and it makes. So that we have to think about partitions. So this is one part here, and uh, uh, I guess that either side is exactly the same. And then there will be some filler at behind. But I like to put these two these two of them at the last step. So in the meantime, I will do this small one before then the big one here. So we're going to go sort of part by part, bunch by bunch, all right? So uh, let's guess this one first. I'm not portioning because uh, other side a little bit different, doesn't matter. So I like to do, as I always do, uh, one piece. And after that, I'm marking with the knife, give some hairlines, all right? So just look at it first. If I look at here, like that, that should be okay. All right. There's no hairlines over here, but it will be nice to have some. I also cut the end a little bit. I may just do this part here. All right. Like this. So a little bit of water here. Spray will do. This one, I keep it. I do one more. Keep it like this. So, just want to make it this, this part. Just go coming from here over the ear and going back again. That's the one. Same thing on the other side. Right. 
Yes. Now, the second one is this one. Yes. The other side. All right, now let's fill up this area. I want to have more at the bottom than the top. Something like that. Okay. Get in there. I like to do this two piece now. It's pretty much like very full, uh, sort of like heavy on the front, and then goes thinner in the middle, and then heavier again at the behind. Right. So something like this. All right. Take this one out. Without trimming, we need. Maybe with this one now. So now, one thing happening. Uh, she has this the bent. You know? 
it comes from from this area from this area and then goes all the way up here like that all the way up here and then this one goes to from here up here so that will be like a preparations for us right? so Just need some gluing over here and we're done. I like to do this now the head banner. Put some water that gap that we just created. Okay, then I need to put uh, just one bow there, but it's not really a not usual bow, just a, just a tie, right? So what I like to do, something like that. I like to let this one a little bit dry and use it later on because I want it stays in the in the air. And then a little bit of like joining part in the middle. Something like that. Okay, now. I like to do one of the shoe, the second shoe I like to show you. Now, that part is already uh, there. I just want to put a kind of flat piece uh, coming all the way from back to the front. And I'm going to add one more sort of a bit more meaty, a bit more larger piece in the front. All right. So just make a little bit of moisturizing here. A little bit of moisture here. A little bit behind. So a bit more front. All right, let's go. All right, turn around. Let's take this. That's it. That's on the back of the shoes. All right. And then this one. Cut off. Cut off. And then I'll take a little bit bigger piece, like that. The same. No, it's too big. Moisture. Moisture here also. Here it is. Then 
Then take a little, little thin stripe here like this, thin stripe like that, and put a little bit water here. There. Place it there and cut. Cut this one. Join it. Cut that one. Join it. Okay, now. Let's put the upper uh, bow. All right. Now a little bit of, again, moisture here. All right. This one here, like that. That one here, like that. Okay, and this one in the center. A little bit more. So it's all there and then all what we have to do now, remove that protection sheet and uh, clean the table. I have a few more words to tell you. So as I mentioned before, I like to use a little bit luster here. So when you use luster colors, uh, if the brush pick up a lot of dust, it will be quite messy. So you have to get rid of the dust first and then just keep the minimum amount of on, on the brush and then just go on the certain areas, which is deeper areas, slightly shade. All right. So uh, just be careful, not too much, all right? Otherwise it will be not so nice, all right? Just on the cheeks here. Okay. And then maybe just a little bit on this area. Even that very little amount, it will make a little bit different, all right? So that should be enough for the. Now that was uh, my uh, three-dimensional Alice standing a cake, but uh, I just don't want you to think about only Alice about this tutorial. You can use the same technique to do any other uh, cake like that for any other character, as long as she has the skirt, because that technique need to have a skirt to have that platform underneath so you can uh, keep the weight on top and then it carries everything. It will be enough also cake enough inside the skirt here to, to serve. So um, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe our uh, channel here. So just to be tuned with us. And other things I would like to remind you again uh, one more time, our uh, uh, cake note, the cake designing, pricing and management software is already out. Two weeks of uh, free trial is available. Please go and join. And after that, you will be amazed with that. You can just uh, do your design at home uh, throughout the, uh, kind of having, a, having a nice time in the coffee. And then you can design your cakes with no problem with just a couple of clicks. And other things I have a good news. Uh, in this tutorial, you must be realized that I did not use any microwave uh, to warm up my pastillage, to condition my pastillage. My pastillage was always ready in the bag. I take it out and knead it and use it. So that is because of this product. It's called Yena's Pastillage. After many years, uh, my dream came true. We're coming up with this product together with the sugar in India. And uh, that will be sooner or later will be on the shelves on selected uh, cake decorating supplies. Just to let you know, it is a news. So uh, you can also use, of course, uh, my non-vegan version of uh, pastillage from yenasway.com. The recipe is available. Uh, this is uh, vegan and halal at the same time. So that is all for today. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, God bless you all. Until to my next tutorial. Bye for now.